Most islands are built by volcanoes or coral, but here, deep earth mantle rock rises straight from miles beneath the ocean. Geologists thought that was impossible. Yet Macquarie Island is not lifeless. It is crowded with seals and penguins found nowhere else. Why does this place even exist? And what forces could have made the strangest island on Earth? The paradox starts here. Underfoot, the rocks are smooth and greenish, sliced with veins and polished by endless rain. This is serpentinite, a mineral born when seawater seeps deep into the Earth's mantle and transforms peridotite, normally found far below the crust, into something new. Here, the surface is not granite or volcanic ash, but the same material that forms the planet's deep interior. Walking on Macquarie Island means standing on mantle. Geologists usually reach this only by drilling through kilometers of ocean floor. The island's ridge exposes a rare, nearly complete cross-section of oceanic lithosphere, starting with pillow basalts at the coast, then a band of vertical dikes, followed by dense gabbro, and finally, this serpentinate. Each layer tells a story of ancient magma, slow cooling, and relentless pressure. The textures are slick and foliated, twisted by tectonic forces. Fossilized faults and shiny mineral seams crisscross the rocks, evidence of powerful deformation. Nowhere else on Earth can you trace a path from the uppermost ocean floor down through the crust to the mantle, all in a single walk. This is not a relic welded onto a continent millions of years ago. The rocks here are still part of an active plate boundary, continuously shaped by forces that would normally keep the mantle hidden far below the waves. The geological mystery is visible in every outcrop. How did this deep sea rock rise into the cold air, and what mechanism could have lifted an entire slice of oceanic plate into the light? Every summer, the narrow beaches and low slopes of Macquarie Island become a living mosaic. Southern elephant seals, some weighing over two tons, haul themselves onto dark sand and tussock grass, crowding together in dense, shifting groups. Their deep bellows echo above the constant wind. Among them, four species of penguin return from the open ocean to breed. King penguins stand nearly a meter tall, their gold and silver plumage catching the dim light as they shuffle across the rocks. Gen 2 penguins with their bright orange bills nest in smaller groups on the grassy terraces. Rockhopper penguins, smaller and bristling with yellow crests, climb the steepest slopes and wedge themselves into cracks along the shoreline. But it is the royal penguin that sets this island apart. Macquarie is the only place on Earth where royal penguins breed. Each year, hundreds of thousands of pairs gather here and on the nearby islets, forming vast colonies that stretch for kilometers. The air fills with their calls and the sharp scent of guano, a sensory reminder of life's intensity in a place shaped by deep earth forces. The abundance is striking against the backdrop of exposed mantle rock, greenish, slick, and inhospitable to most forms of life. Yet on this unlikely foundation, animal numbers reach a scale found almost nowhere else in the subantarctic. Scientists from the Institute for Marine and Antarctic Studies return each season to count nests, track breeding success, and watch for subtle shifts that might signal change. The health of these colonies is more than a curiosity. It is a barometer for the entire Southern Ocean ecosystem, recorded year after year on a strip of land that should, by all rights, be barren. Macquarie Island rises where two immense plates meet, the Indo-Australian plate to the northwest and the Pacific plate to the southeast. Their boundary runs along the Macquarie Ridge complex, a 1,600 kilometer scar stretching across the Southern Ocean. Unlike most plate boundaries, this is not a classic subduction trench or spreading ridge. Here, the plates slide past each other along a transform fault, but their motions are not perfectly parallel. Instead, the plates grind together at an angle forcing the crust to crumple and thicken in a process geologists call transpression. The result is a narrow ridge thrust upward from the sea floor, with Macquarie Island as its highest point above the waves. A minimalist plate map reveals the geometry. The Indo-Australian plate pushes southeast, the Pacific plate moves northwest, and the Macquarie fault zone slices between them. Oblique compression along this fault zone is powerful enough to drive oceanic crust and even mantle rock above sea level. 
Seismic profiles show steep fault traces and blocks of oceanic lithosphere stacked like books on a shelf. And the ridge itself is segmented, with each segment accommodating a mix of strike-slip motion and vertical uplift. This combination of sideways grinding and relentless squeezing is rare in the world's oceans. Most islands form from volcanic eruptions or coral growth, but Macquarie is a slice of ancient seafloor lifted intact by the ongoing collision of continents. The process is still active. Earthquakes shake the ridge, and GPS data record millimeters of movement each year. The exposed mantle at the surface is not a relic of ancient tectonics, but the direct result of present-day plate interactions. This is why, on Macquarie, the deep earth stands open to the sky. On December 23, 2004, the ground on Macquarie Island shook for nearly two minutes. A magnitude 8.1 earthquake ruptured the Macquarie Ridge south of the island, sending seismic waves through the Southern Ocean. The event was among the largest strike-slip earthquakes ever recorded, its force strong enough to register on seismographs around the world. At the research station, metal shelves rattled and equipment trembled. The crew, just over 30 people that summer, waited out the shaking, then checked instruments and radioed Hobart with their initial reports. No buildings collapsed, but the message was clear. The island sits on a living fault, and deformation is not a relic of the past. Since 1948, the Australian Antarctic Division has maintained a research base on the island's low isthmus. The station's silhouette stands against the wind, surrounded by antennas and weather masts. Inside, banks of monitors and recording devices track the island's pulse. Seismic sensors log every tremor, tide gauges measure subtle shifts, and meteorological instruments chart the constant changes in wind and pressure. The 2004 quake left a sharp signature on the station's seismogram, a jagged spike marking the release of decades of accumulated strain. Data from Macquarie's instruments feed into global networks, helping scientists map the mechanics of the plate boundary and gauge the risk of future events. The station's presence is more than symbolic. It is a node in a worldwide system of observation, capturing the ongoing story of an island that is never truly at rest. Bare hillsides once scarred by erosion now carry a thickening coat of green. The change began in 2007, when helicopters swept low over the island, scattering bait to reach every gully and ridge. Teams with detector dogs followed, searching for any sign of surviving rabbits, rats, or mice. For more than a century, these introduced animals had stripped native vegetation, leaving slopes raw and unstable. Rain carved deep channels where tussock grass had vanished and landslides grew more frequent each year. The eradication campaign stretched through storms and setbacks, but by 2014, the island was declared free of invasive mammals. Parks and wildlife surveys tracked the recovery. Tussock grassland expanded, herb fields returned, and the ground began to hold together. Monitoring plots recorded a steady rise in plant cover, and the number of landslips fell sharply. The scars of overgrazing have not vanished, but each season brings new shoots. In this place shaped by upheaval, the return of native vegetation is proof that restoration is possible, even at the edge of the world. Wind sweeps across Macquarie Island without pause. The westerlies, known to sailors as the Furious Fifties, race around the globe almost unbroken, funneled by the Southern Ocean. Gusts often top 100 kilometers per hour, flattening tussock grass and bending weather masts. Rain falls on more than 300 days each year, sometimes as sleet or fine mist, sometimes as sheets driven sideways by the gale. The sky rarely clears. Even in midsummer, cloud presses low against the hills and temperatures hover between three and seven degrees Celsius. Salt spray and constant moisture saturate the ground, turning soil to sponge and feeding countless rivulets that carve the slopes. Along the coast, waves pound at the cliffs, stripping away loose rock and undercutting ledges. Erosion is relentless. Each year, the sea claims a little more of the shoreline. Vegetation clings where it can, shaped by the wind into low mats and dense tussocks trees cannot survive here. The island's entire surface feels temporary, held together by roots and the stubborn will of plants adapted to endure. Every living thing must contend with the same forces that expose the deep earth, wind, rain, 
and the unending surge of the Southern Ocean. Right now, Macquarie Island stands as the only exposed slice of oceanic mantle on Earth, a reminder that our planet's boundaries still shift beneath us. How we protect these rare anomalies today shapes what survives tomorrow. Some wonders, once lost, never return. What would you risk to keep them? <laughs>